Yeah, so I, I didn't prepare slides. Okay. Yeah, but I think the, the chapter was quite, uh, I'm, I was just looking at it now because I was like, oh, maybe some student might also prepare something. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think we could go through it. <laughs> ah, yeah. okay. Because so I saw like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, okay, but we can go through. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, chapter nine workflow. Uh, uh, yeah, work, workflow scripts and, and projects. So basically what I understand from this, I think the, the learning objectives are how to like uh, um, um, organize our workflow that so that everything is in order. Because uh, I think the author's assumption is by the fact that we are this far, it means that we, we should not consider ourselves like uh, complete beginners like myself. I should at least uh, go with the notion that, oh, now I have got some, a little bit of experience because going through up to chapter chapter nine, is a fit. So the author is trying to make some um, um, guide us through how to prepare, uh, uh, create a new R script instead of just typing your code in uh, the console, uh, which uh, um, he argues that it's not going to be very helpful because you, you could, if uh, once you you clear it, you don't you cannot get those codes back. And then he went on to like uh, explain that you know. Um, if you are working, it's better to put your 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 works in in projects, like your analysis. You put them in projects, and and then he shows us how to prepare projects and 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 things like that. So I I go through. So he starts with uh, preparing a script, and then he gives us the keyboard shortcut. Okay. This is this. Uh, I'm I'm just I just know this now, and I just read it. I realized that's the shortcut, which is quite handy. So that's the the keyboard shortcut for preparing like to open a, a new R script, which uh, we could also go and, and just do it at the, you know, like like he showed here in the, we can do it from the our R environment and it creates the this current environment like this, where we have the, this is the, like the editor and we have the, the console, which is down and we have the output plane and the environment plane. Yeah, and we have the environment plane. So we can just come here at the, the plus, uh, at the editor on top, at the plus, we can just uh, click on that and then it will uh, compl open a new R script. So it says uh, figure uh, 9.1, opening the uh, opening the, the script editor adds a new plane to, at the top of, at the top left of the IDE. So running, running codes. Um, it says, uh, it stressed the point that, you know, um, they, this shortboard, uh, this keyboard shortcut, uh, the key, the key to using, uh, using the script editor effectively is to memorize one, one of the most important keyboard, uh, shortcuts, which is the, the, the command or control enter. This executes the current R expression in the, in the, in the console. So, uh, like, uh, it, uh, he gives an example here. We can see the 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 if the cursor is at this uh, black uh, box when you just uh, press like uh, control enter it uh, it, uh, it it runs the this this commands it runs this command for example uh, take the code below if uh, the cursor is at the the black box mm -hmm. uh, so pressing the command uh, enter will run the complete uh, command and generates and moves on to the next uh, set of like uh, uh, next command uh, in the script, so which which makes it quite handy, makes it quite handy. So instead of running your uh, code expression by expression, we could also use this keyboard shortcut, which is the command or the shift, uh, the control plus shift plus s, s will which will run the uh, the entire R, R script. Um, so doing this regularly is a great way to ensure that your that you you capture all the important parts of your code in the script. Then it, uh, uh, it, it like uh, it, it just give us some 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 how some some like some some useful tips that we should be mindful of. We recommend that you always start your R script with uh, packages that that you that you need to use. Like uh, in the script, the, all the packages that we are using, we we like library, ggplot, library, tidyverse. You know, we we start the, the script with these things. Uh, that way, it uh, that way. If you share your code with others, uh, they can easily uh, see 
which package you had, uh, you, which package they need to install. Uh, note, however, you, you should never see, uh, like when, when we are uh, writing our scripts, the install uh, dot package uh, function, we should not include it there. Uh, um, in a script that you share, like we should not include this install dot package in a script that we are going to share. Uh, like he's saying that this is somehow antisocial to want to say to someone or oh, do this, do that. So instead we just uh, um, write the library, blah, blah, blah function, library, blah, blah, but not the install uh, dot packages. When working through feature uh, chapters, we highly recommend starting the, the script editor and practicing your keyboard shortcuts. Like over time, it becomes like handy. So I'm seeing all these shortcuts. I was like, I'm, I'm saying to myself, how, how am I going to, how am I going to get all these shortcuts to my head? But I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, uh, eventually with practice, I guess, I guess you. Yeah, you, exactly. You, yeah. With practice, sometimes I use, um, yeah. you know, I use Notion. Yeah. Um, uh, not Notion. Um, Anki, uh, which is called space repetition. You know, Anki. Anki. Yeah, I think I, I. I, is it similar to like Quizlet? Yes, something like that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. sometimes I use Anki when I was learning, you know, because for me, when I was learning, the, because I went through this book first time, I yeah. have every chapter, every yeah. chapter I do the summary of what I learned, I put it in Anki. Oh, and, so, I, so are you having those uh, like flashcards or? Um, no, I don't know. <laughs> you can, so one thing with flashcards, yeah, yeah. I, I can check them, but it will be, rather useful for you to create them yourself so that you you know you, creating them creating ah. flashcard is even you know also useful for people when you are creating it you are instilling it in your memory again ah, so because, yeah, yeah yeah i think i think i'll try i think i'll try that because i read it like yeah some people say like um doing the flashcard yourself also you are learning rather than just to go and check off the shelf something you know and yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to have that all the chapters. Um, you know, um, when we read the chapter, I used to anchor them. So while I was uh, uh, maybe on the ways, I'm free. I just need to revise them. So by that, they just tick. You know, all the shortcut. Yeah. So maybe you can. Yeah, try. because a, a lot of shortcut. I, I think I'll I'll consider like having a, an anchor uh, folder for this shortcuts. Yeah. Now it, it's like it continues with uh, R Studio Diagnostics. Uh, in script editor, R Studio will highlight syntax errors uh, with array uh, squiggly line uh, and across uh, in the sidebar, like like this. So this indicates that something is wrong. So if we want to know actually what what is wrong, we can if we hover over the cross, it will tell us like here yeah. it says on 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 expected uh, token Y, uh, unexpected token. So like uh, he's like is giving us in a sense a description of the the error. That uh, the syntax error that 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 we've committed. Yeah. Our student will also let you know about uh, potential problems, like uh, like here because uh, like uh, we are saying we are assigning three to any something like that. That's what no like three is equals to any, which is not actually which is not true, you know. Or maybe yeah. you could uh, some comments on this. Um. Yeah. It's still something like you know doing this. Um, Checking whether this um, is any, uh, yeah. which is wrong. So that's why I think, yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. Yeah. whether. Yeah. Um, but I think this is a single assignment, right? Yeah, yeah, it seems like that. Yeah, so it's trying to assign like uh, any to three, which is wrong. Yeah, yeah, something which is like. because three is actually a, a something. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, that's it. And and then we go to saving and naming. I think we have got. Co covered this in uh, the previous chapters, how to uh, like name your, 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 is it your? Your script? Yeah, yeah, your script, yeah. How to name, no, I think we we, we look at how to name like variables, not scripts, yeah? In the previous oh, okay, chapters. exactly, exactly, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so now he's like showing us uh, um, how to name uh, scripts, uh, like R Studio automatically saves uh, the content of the script editor when you quit. It does that uh, and automatically reloads it when you open. Nevertheless, it is a good idea to avoid untitled. Like when you don't save anything, any script, it, it like untitled one to, I, I, yeah, I, I think I've seen a couple of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've seen a couple of that and so on. And instead, uh, save your scripts to give them inform informative like names, you know, 
So he gives an example here. So this is basically, uh, uh, for example, suppose you have the following files in a, in a project folder. It's like a project, but it, looking at it, it's difficult to understand what, what this project is about. And maybe like the creator of this project, if he should come back to, to this, they might find it difficult, even though he's like, he, he's trying to load some, some data and then generate some report, do some analysis and then generate some reports and save the reports. But with this naming, it's not clear at all. Then he gives us the correct way. There are a variety of problems here. It's hard to find which file to run first. File names contain spaces. There are two files with the same name, but uh, different capitalizations, like uh, the final report and this. Uh, and some names don't describe their content, like uh, uh, run first and tempt. He has a better way. So like, like with this, even though I don't know what this project is about, but I can see the name with, from the naming, I can see the, guy, the first thing that the guy did, he loaded the data and then did some exploratory data this analysis and then did some modeling and then save some like some 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 pictures and then he report the report report uh, like prepare some reports and then report like get a draft of the reports so so basically like we can see this naming is quite uh, it's uh, very informative and helpful in yeah yeah, in understanding what this guy is trying to do. Like uh, numbering the key scripts make it obvious in which order to run them and consistent naming schemes make it easier to see what, what, what varies. Additionally, the, the, the figures are labeled similarly. The reports are distinguished by dates, including included uh, in the file name and tempt is like renamed as the report draft notes. So, so basically, I think this is really helpful, especially if you are working in a, a like a different projects. I think this could be very helpful. Now he moves on to the second part of the chapter, which is like projects, and I think here he's telling us how to like uh, create projects. Um, so, uh, like one day you will need to quit R, go and do something, and and then come back to it. So, in a sense, it's like uh, he's just trying to motivate. The reason why we need to like create projects to handle uh, these real life situations, you need to make two decisions. The first one is, what is this the source of truth? Like uh, uh, what you what you save as your last lasting record of what happens, and the second uh, real life situation is where does your analysis live? Like where where are they living? Like he he starts with the the. The first point, uh, what is the source of truth? As a beginner to, as a beginning R user, it's okay to consider your environment, i.e. Uh, the, the, the objects listed in, in your environment plane to be your, to, to be your analysis. However, in the long run, you will, you will be much better off if you ensure that your, your R scripts are the source of truth. Yeah, with your R scripts and your data files, you can recreate the environment. So I think here, basically what he's trying to say that it's um, if you like organize your work as in projects and you put all the, like the, the, the files, the data and, 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 and the, 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 the pictures and all that in, in, in this project uh, folder, it makes life easy and it makes, it, it makes uh, reproducibility easy. Like someday in the future, if you want to reproduce some of your work, uh, it makes it very easy to, to do that. And then to, to help keep your R scripts as the source of truth for your analysis, we highly recommend that you uh, instruct R not to preserve your uh, works, work, 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 workspace between sessions. You can do this like, so it's like basically the, the default in R is to like, uh, it, it, saves, it preserves your, your workspace. And so that when you close it, if you open it, it takes you back to where you stopped, something like this. So uh, he said we can use this uh, um, this command this uh, use this uh, use blank scale to to change this default uh, setting. So this will cost you uh, this will cost you some uh, some short term pain initially because now you need to restart. Uh, when you restart R, you will no longer remember. So it will no longer remember the code that you you ran the last time. So I had read this, but I'm yet to 
like implement it because I, I'm like, if I implement this and maybe I, I, I will not want to go through the pain that he's talking about. What is that that you have not implemented? This, uh, the, the, the one that I, the, the code I've highlighted. Uh, yes, yes, this, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's suggesting that I think this in a sense changes the, the default setting in R, not to restore. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. so um, you, you, what you need to do is, you know, yeah. you, you can see this R studio. Um, if yeah. you go to, there is this R, um, this general, if you go to general and you go to basic, there is this yeah. restore data into workspace. So I think by default in R is checked. So you need to uncheck it so that if and every session you use, um, it will do fresh. But this one, yeah. Um, when you run this, use this, use blank slate. It means yeah. every time you want to do something, when you run this, it will use a um, you know, uh, fresh space. Even even though you check restore, even the restore is checked, but when you run this, it will you know make end everything fresh. So the best ah. idea is just the best idea is just to just uncheck this restore and you don't need to use use this use this blank slate you know what i mean oh yeah 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 uh, uh, th thanks for that uh, clarification yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and then uh, uh there is a great pair of uh keyboard shortcuts that will work uh, together to make sure you you have captured the important parts of your code in the editor like uh the the command shift plus F10 to restart and the command shift plus S to rerun the current uh, uh, current script. So these are I think these are a good uh, shortcuts to to be familiar with. So so now it goes to the second part where uh, where does your analysis live? Um, R has a powerful uh, notion of the working directory. So like, like all your analysis will live in this working directory. And the, sh the, 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 the command for that is get working directory, which when we type it, we'll get it. But at the console on top, at the console like this, you see it displays the working directory. As a beginner, as a beginning R user, it's okay to let your working directory be your, your home directory and uh, home directory uh documents directory or any other weird directory on your computer but uh like but he's saying that we are this far so we should not consider ourselves as beginners so it's better to uh you can set the working directory by from from within r but they don't recommend that they don't recommend us to use this uh set working directory instead they they, they recommend that we create a project like R Studio projects. So uh, basically, that's how to create a project. Uh, keeping all your all the files associated with a given project, input data, R script, analysis, analytical results, and figures together in one directory is such a wise and common practice that R Studio has built in support for these VR projects. So to the short code is like uh, files, new project. And then once we have the new project, we like we click on the new project uh, directory, and then that's how basically we create a, a project. And then then click the project name. We give it uh, the directory name. Like this example, we uh, call it the R for DS. And then and that then that's it. Finally, we uh, finally fill in the directory project name. Choose a good subdirectory for for its name, and then click create projects and then this creates uh, the project. Once our project is created, we can still use this uh, get working directory command to see the working directory uh, in which uh, our script in like the working directory for our, our console. So now enter the following commands uh, in the R script in the, in, the, in the script editor and save the file calling it uh, the diamonds.r. So Basically, he like wants us to like create a new script in this uh, project that we've just created uh, in that uh, um, R for R for DS uh, um, project we have just created. And then once once we quit uh, R Studio, uh, we can still search for this uh, um, diamond. We can start for search for diamonds and then 
we will, we will see it. So he's like, uh, this is a good uh, way to work with R. And uh, if you rigorously save figures uh, to files with uh, R code and never with the mouse or the keyboard, you will be able to reproduce all work, the old work with ease. Like in a sense, if we follow these uh, um, steps, it will be easy if we want to reproduce some of the work we did previously. And then uh, he talks about uh, the relative and the and the absolute part, uh, especially if we are. Uh, he he uh, he argues here that or advised that we should never use absolute parts, but instead we should use relative parts. That you know, um, uh, anyone we share it with, the part will just adjust to the the user of the the the, the person's uh, uh, personal computer. One uh, once uh, you are inside a project, you should only. You should only ever use a relative part, not absolute parts. So what's the what's the difference? A relative part uh, is uh, relative to the working directory. So like if I create a relative part, uh, if I create uh, like a particular script and create it using a relative part, when I share it with, with you, it, it automatically adjusts to your to your to your to your working directory. Whilst with with an absolute part, that's that's not that's not necessarily the case. So he discourages us from, from using the absolute part. And then he talks about another important difference between operating systems, how you uh, separate the components of the part, like for the Mac and Linux uses the, the slash. And for Windows, they use the, the back, backslash. I can work with either type, no matter what uh, platform you are currently working, currently using. But unfortunately, backslashes mean something special to R. And a single uh, and to get a, a single backslash in the part, you need to type two backslashes. That makes life frustrating. So it's it's better to use the the slash instead of the backslash, something like this. And um, I think basically that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a quick, uh, uh, very short chapter. I think basically yeah. that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, and if there are some comments that you want to make. Uh, no, <laughs> not general. So thank you for presenting. Um, yeah. yeah. So we have like, I think a quick break for the new year, right? Um, yeah, th this guy was asking this, uh, I think uh, he was John. asking about this. Yeah, John was asking about this, so I don't know. Yeah, I think maybe. we have, uh, um, we, it, it, it indicates that, you know, your sign up sheet indicates that you skip, you know, that you plan to skip uh, the 31st and the on the seventh, is that the case? Yeah, yeah. I think all the book clubs, that's what they have. So we can follow and skip. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 fine. And uh, yeah. next week also is like uh, we skip it. Yes. So we have like uh, like three weeks. No, two weeks, I guess, right? Uh, no, no, because he's indicating that in the, he asked <laughs> that we set uh, like thirty first. Okay. And what? And and seven. Mm hmm. Like seventh of January and thirty first of December, or we can just take twenty fourth and thirty first. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what we need to talk, check. Yeah, yeah. So twenty fourth and thirty first December. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So then, then I, I think I'll just write a, a message in the Slack to tell him that you. Yes, know. yes, yes. Respond to him, please. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Abdul. And uh, yeah, thank thanks. You yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. See you. Bye. Uh, new year. Ciao, ciao. Yeah, yeah, you too. Ciao. Bye.